You ready? Here we go. What is going on, everyone? Bill here, and on today's show, you couldn't write a better script. Folks, within less than a two-day period, Review Tech USA agreed to come on my show. Then, a bunch of people contacted me to say, don't have him on your show. And now, it apparently is official. We're going to find out for ourselves today. He's apparently already backed out of being on the show. Not even 48 hours have transpired, and all of this has gone down. Today, we will talk about that in detail, because Rich, you know, in his not in his right mind, never is anymore, didn't actually reach out to me to talk to me about it. Instead, he decided to stream about it. What a shocking twist, right? In addition to that, I have now played an entire day of Silent Hill 2 Remake, and I would like to tell you all my thoughts about it, but it will be spoiler-free. I will not be spoiling anything about the game's plot and stuff like that. I'm just going to be talking about my initial thoughts about the elements of the game. So that should be fun. Plus, we got some game news, some updates, and more. Great podcast today. Thank you for joining me. Let's get this show on the road. It's lovely Monday morning. Alrighty, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the show. It indeed is Monday, the 7th of October, 2024. I'm DSP. For those who don't know, today is React Day. Now, normally my React Day would be on a Sunday. And when I say React Day, I mean it's a day when I don't do any gameplay. But instead, I'm reacting to various things. For example, we have my clip show, DSP versus the Internet, that I do over on my DSP Reacts channel. And then we have Retro React, a late night stream where I chill with my audience. And together, we watch back classic playthroughs that I've done over 10 years ago for nostalgia purposes. So, typically, this would be all day Sunday, but this week, we had an exception with the Silent Hill 2 remake that came out yesterday, if you had purchased the early access, as I did. And so, because I was doing that yesterday, we didn't do the React Day. So, we're doing it today. It just kind of shuffles the schedule around a little bit. I'm excited for today. Should be some good stuff. We got some great clips to watch, and tonight... FYI, if you're in the horror vibe and you're really enjoying things like Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster and Silent Hill 2, more of that is coming tonight because on that late stream on my DSP throwback channel, Retro React is Silent Hill 1 from early 2012, the first time I ever played the game. And since then, I have not actually played it or watched it again. So for me, this is going to be a really cool night of, you know, remembering what that game was like and having a good time with all of you. So I certainly hope that you guys are going to join me for that later tonight. That's around between 6.45 to 7 p.m. Pacific time on the DSP Throwback channel, okay? So, what a day, what a podcast, where do we begin? How about this? Let's thank you all for five straight streams of hitting the goals. What does that mean? It means that we've been hitting the King's Coffers goal regularly for five straight streams. If we hit 13... And it goes through the end of the streaming week, which is Thursday for me. Friday's my day off this week. We were locked in a special episode of DSP Tries It this coming weekend. Tomorrow, Wendy's, the fast food chain that does burgers and stuff, is launching a 25th anniversary celebration collaboration with SpongeBob SquarePants. And they're doing the Krabby Patty meal. And so, if we hit all the goals this week, this weekend I will do a DSP Tries It taste test of the Krabby Patty Meal live right here on stream. Pretty exciting, right? So, thank you so much for five straight. Let's keep it rolling. And going along with that, I have shout-outs to do before we even begin with anything, so let's just get right to the shout-outs, right? Okay. We start off today with a $25 tip. This is just from someone... Uh, This is someone who said they basically wanted me to keep their message personal. All right? So thank you very much to this $25 tipper. I appreciate you. I've read your message and I acknowledge it. 
They said they wanted to keep it personal. I will respect that. Thank you very much for that. Let's go ahead and get you the first animation of the day. I might have to refresh my leaderboard system, or not leaderboard, my animation system because it seems like it's lagging. Oh, there we go. At least it played. Cool. So to start today, we got a $25 anonymous tip. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you. Continuing on. The second tip is a very generous $30 tip. And this one doesn't, I don't think this one has a name attached to it either, but it has a very lengthy message. This one has such a lengthy message that I can't even read it to you because it, it would basically cut off. But let's play a nice animation. I'm going to read as much as I can. Whoa, we haven't even seen that animation yet, have we? That's disturbing. <laughs> I don't remember that one yet. <clears throat> so there we go. Thank you so much for the $30 tip. Let's see what this person has to say. You ready? I know you are an absolute adoration of your craft. You're a master at it. As always, you may read this live if you wish. I will. Let's see what they have to say. With all due respect, do not let Rich from Tech USA come onto your platform. I say this for the simple reason. If you recall, Craig is a snake. Well, having him on, in my opinion, wasn't even a good idea. The stench still lingers. But I understand your reasons. But Phil, I'm pleading with you. Not rich. Rich will not change. Nothing that you say or do or ask this incel will not make a single difference. It might do you more of an injustice. Honestly, nobody cares what Rich thinks or why he's doing what he's doing. He's a bum. A bum always does bum shit because they are bums. <laughs> Maybe I don't have to do the segment about Rich today. This guy is doing it for me. I, wow. Let's continue. Um. Let's see. So he's a bum. You can't sway a bum. Giving a bum money enables them. He needs to want to change. Please, Phil, this is a bad move from an intelligent king as yourself. Leave this piece of shit floating in the gutter. You are better. You've changed, so don't stain yourself with this. Please don't see this as me dictating how to run your business. I, and then the message cut off because it was so lengthy that PayPal limited the amount of characters that I could see. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, I like seriously, I didn't even get to the segment yet. And this guy, holy macaroni. Well, thank you for the whopping $30 contribution. I really appreciate that. Thank you for weighing in on Review Tech. I mean, this is basically the kind of message I was getting yesterday. Remember yesterday I did the segment saying people are contacting me saying, Phil, don't have Rich on the show. That's the sentiment that was <clears throat> resonating throughout people who were like commenting on that video or few people reached out to me behind the scenes and were like, don't do it. So apparently a lot of people just think it would be a complete waste of everyone's time, not just my time, right? But everyone's time to have this guy on the show that nothing would really come of it. It would just be stupid. Yikes. Okay. Um, I also received a $5 and one cent tip. This person says, oh, it's, it's Perry the White. What's up, Perry? He says, good day, King. I just returned from visiting family. Hold on, let me play his animation. I'll read the rest of his message. Let's get some Count Filula up on the stream there. It was a $5 and one cent tip. That gets us up to 60 bucks in tips already, and we're just starting. Thank you guys so much for the support. I mean, that's a, a big head start on the goal to hit for the stream and get to six and continue the momentum this week. So he says, good day, King. Just returned from visiting family. Seems like I missed some excitement over the last few days. I got to catch up. What the heck is going on with Dickers? Your humble servant, Perry the White. Yeah, we're going to find out. I've got it. I've got the, the scoop. I've got everything. We're going to watch it together uh, and try to and figure out what the hell's really going on over there. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I always hear everything secondhand. I don't go around watching other people's stuff. I don't even have time, you know? But in this case, it's pretty unique. It's fun because he does it on his live stream instead of DMing me. Even though we have an open DM conversation about him appearing on my show, he just pretends like that's not happening and he just goes on his stream instead. This is just funny. We'll talk about it, okay? Anyway. <clears throat> so, let's talk, folks. So, here's the deal. Well, first segment, here's what I want to do. Let's do a segment about Silent Hill 2. I want to get this out of the way because I'm excited to tell you about my thoughts after having played it all day long. But I promise you this segment will be spoiler-free. I'm not going to tell you about the story of the game. 
or critical parts of the game because I don't want you to be spoiled if you're going to play it yourself. It actually doesn't come out for everyone as of yet. It comes out, I believe it's tonight, like 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific time to uh, midnight Eastern that you can play it if you buy it normally. So I'm not going to, to be a jerk and just spill the beans about the entire game. All right, but here's what I would like to say. Five hours in, I played it for about five hours yesterday, okay? Silent Hill 2 Remake, for me, is the equivalent of what was done several years ago. At this point, it was like five more years ago, right? With Resident Evil 2 Remake. What Capcom did with Resident Evil 2 Remake is they kept the same story, the same general locations, enemies, and elements of the original Resident Evil 2, but they completely recreated it from the ground up as a modern game. They redid the entire map with, uh, you know, Raccoon City Police Department. The gameplay elements were now third person over the shoulder instead of tank control, classic survival horror. The entire game was basically renovated from the ground up to be modern. And because of that, at the time, I told you guys, I actually felt like that was my favorite survival horror game uh, in a very long time. Okay? Now, Res uh, the Resident Evil 2 remake went down to sell insanely well and actually created an entire new line of horror games for Capcom, including they remade Resident Evil 3, then they remade Resident Evil 4, right? But then they also made Resident Evil 7 and 8. So they've been hitting a high note ever since Resident Evil 2 remake. That's really the game that gave Capcom their legs back when it came to survival horror. Silent Hill 2 Remake, for me, at least five hours in, I don't know if the game will fall flat on its face halfway through, five hours in, this is exactly the same situation. All right, what Bloober Team did is they took all the story elements, they took the atmosphere, they took the characters, they took the, you know, basic gameplay mechanics, and they recreated them in a modern way. So now when you play the game, it's not about, oh, the controls are so clunky, or, oh, the graphics are kind of rough here, or, oh, I can't figure this out because... It's so outdated and stuff. No, it feels modern. At the same time, they did a really great job of making it feel tense, making it still feel scary, because that is kind of the problem with a lot of modern horror games. They're too easy, and when they become too easy, there's no more element of risk or, or, or being scared. Like, why are you going to be scared if you have 7,000 bullets, right? You would never be scared. You have too many, too much ammo. What if there's a million health items, right? Or what if the enemies are just so easy to kill that it's not a big deal? They did a good job of now not really doing that. Like, there's ammo in the game, but it's not overabundant. Enemies take, you know, a few shots to kill. So you're using more than just a couple shots to kill each enemy. Or you can be more strategic. You know, you shoot them in the leg and then you run up and beat them with your melee weapon. The melee combat is modern, but... At the same time, it becomes tense when you're fighting more than one enemy at a time. It's really difficult, actually, to not take damage. Um, and the further in I get, the tenser it's actually getting for me. Okay, so, yeah, I'm having a great time with the game. Overall, the gra first of all, the let's talk about the graphics. Keep in mind, I'm playing on PC. I can't attest for how this game plays on PS5. On PC, once I tweaked the graphical settings for the initial setup, um, it was amazing. The only thing that people said you have to turn off, I think it's called like SSR or something like that. It's one of these graphical uh, effects. I turned that off because it was recommended by everyone who had had a review copy that that was screwing up the frame rate. So once I turned it off, I mean, I've got ray tracing on. I, I think I put shadows on medium rather than full. Not that you need full shadows, you know, I said medium. But everything else is like maxed. Like everything, every effect is maxed. And I've got it on, you know, unlocked frame rate. The game is just running beautifully. 120 frames on my PC at 1080p resolution, which is gorgeous, okay? The fog, which was the number one complaint when they remade this game for PS3 in HD, uh, the fog looks great. They, they, the way they generate the fog, and it's basically it's always right in front of you, and when you walk into it, it's kind of gone, but then it's always moving with you. It's kind of really unique and creepy in a way. It's kind of, I think, what they were imagining originally with, with Silent Hill. Um, so yeah, so that's done really well. And... Overall, they redesigned Silent Hill to feel like a real vibrant town. Like you're walking through it and everything looks like it would be a real town. Oh, here's a shop. Here's a building where people live. Here's the, the, the uh, post office, you know. Really cool. Looks, looks very realistic. And what they did, okay, just like Resident Evil 2 Remake, the same pacing and story happens, but with different gameplay elements. So now, 
as soon as you hit Silent Hill, there's a town to explore with all new buildings and puzzles and things. I don't want to spoil what they are, but it's all new. It doesn't play at all like the original game. It's like, wow, I'm playing a new game, but I am still playing Silent Hill 2. It feels so cool in that regard. Now, there are some things that I feel like they've probably changed a bit. Uh, already, I can tell you some minor censorship, okay, with a couple scenes that I've seen so far. Not over-censored, but definitely minor censorship. And I think it's because we're in 2024 and times have changed. And... You know, God forbid that they actually had some of the elements from 24 years ago. I think the game came out in 2001. So 23 years ago, things were different. We were still in the risque era of games where over-the-top shit could happen. Um, today, you'd probably get canceled or basically the game would be rated like X if they had some of the shit in it that was in the original. To be honest, you know, I really feel like things have changed in that regard. Um, I'm also wondering, as we move forward in the game, there's a particular boss in this game that is such a mind fuck, okay? When you figure out what it is and what it's supposed to represent. And I wonder if they're going to do that or if they're going to completely throw that plot away because again, for modern audiences, they may not be able to handle it. When I found out about it, when I played this game first in 2012 and people were like, that's what that just was. I was like, what? Like even I couldn't believe it. I was like, nah, you guys are making that shit up. And people were like, no, seriously, we're not. <laughs> oh, so I'm curious how they're going to handle it. But, you know, the character models, are they different? Yes, but they're good. I don't know why people want to complain about anything just because it's different. It's like people are so afraid of change that any change is bad. We just wanted a frame-by-frame -frame recreation of Silent Hill 2. Then why don't you just fucking play Silent Hill 2? Why do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, leave the remake alone. Let it be its own thing. If they change some things good, let it feel fresh and different. I think the character models are fine. The new voice acting is better than the voice acting from the original game by a mile, by the way. So, I'm enjoying my time with the game a lot. So, graphics, great. Improved gameplay, yes. Um, music. I'll, I'll be honest, in the first five hours, finally, they're starting to play some of the iconic music that I remember from the game. For some reason, it seems like the, the music's good, don't get me wrong. And there's a lot of atmospheric music, like it'll ramp up when stuff's going to happen to scare you. But they haven't really played the iconic tunes yet. Finally, near the end of last night's stream, they started playing that song. They finally played it. I was like, ah, finally. Now we can, now I'm remembering, now it connects me back to the past. And when I played it the first time, how I love that music, right? So. Um, that's pretty great. And I mean, honestly, do I have any complaints at all? Oh, uh, like I'm trying to think I, I would actually have to like nitpick and be hard pressed to find complaints about the game. What I will say is this. All right. I am playing on normal difficulty for a good reason. I want to make good progress every time I play. I don't want to get stuck on parts. And now this playthrough that is already going to be 16 to 18 hours long ends up being 30 plus hours, but that extra 10 hours is boring to the viewer, okay? I've confirmed if you play the game on hard, number one, the combat, basically here's what happens with the combat. There's more enemies and the enemies are more aggressive. So half the time now when I'm fighting enemies, I'm playing it smart. I'm trying to create these one-on-one -on -one encounters. But if there's two or three enemies in a room, it gets very difficult, even on normal, like they're gang, they're ganging up on you. On hard, they just always gang up on you. Like no matter what, they're always around you, beating the shit out of you. And it's actually not very fun at all, to be honest. Like I wish it was, but it's just not fun. It's, it's just like, that's, that's what you do once you've already played the game once and you've enjoyed the story and you've enjoyed the vibe. Now you want to put yourself into a challenging situation. Then you play hard. Like if you play it, on the first time, I feel like it just makes the playthrough a tedious task, and I don't want to make this first playthrough tedious to the audience or myself. The other thing is the puzzles. <clears throat> the puzzles actually get significantly harder <clears throat> just by going from normal to hard. And again, what's the most boring part of a survival horror stream? If the streamer gets stuck on a puzzle and they can't advance the game at all because they can't figure out the solution to the puzzle, so they sit there for 20 minutes trying to do it, or else they just look it up. What's the point of that? No one's going to enjoy that. So that's why I'm playing it on, on normal for the first run. 
I'm happy I am. I think I would have regretted it if I actually did hard on the first run. But so far, five hours in, Silent Hill 2 is hitting it on all cylinders. It's checking off every box of what you would want for a modern remake of a horror classic. It really is resonating with me as the next Resident Evil 2 remake. I hope it stays on that level. <clears throat> and I can't wait to play more of it tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm not disappointed I'm not playing it today. Because here's the thing. You guys need to catch up. Many of you are going to play it yourself starting tonight. Many of you have not watched my playthrough yet. Because you, if you guys don't know what happened. Of course this had to happen when I'm playing one of the biggest releases of the year. I go to upload the videos yesterday at the end of my first stream. Corrupted. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding. The, the biggest thing. People have been waiting for this. Corrupted videos. So I couldn't even upload the videos for a while. I had to wait for the stream to process. Once the stream processed, I was able to clip out part one and then put it up. So those videos have only been up for like 11 hours now. And it's very disappointing for me because I always want to get my content out right away for you guys, especially for a new release. And it got delayed like six, seven hours when it could have been live and it wasn't because the stupid thing was corrupted. So I hope you guys enjoy. The first five videos are live on the channel right now in a playlist. You can watch them, you know, at your leisure. And I'll be playing more tomorrow. Let's now transition this into the schedule. All right. So you know what's going on for the rest of the week. Today, it's React Day podcast. After that, it's DSP versus the Internet, my weekly clips react show over on DSP Reacts. And then it's going to be Retro React Silent Hill 1 on DSP Throwback on the late stream. I hope you'll join me for that. That's going to be super cool. Tomorrow, it's time for Silent Hill 2 to continue all day long. So all day here on DSP Gaming, we'll have the podcast and then Silent Hill 2 again, both streams. More great progress in the game. Wednesday, Silent Hill 2 on the day stream. And then Wednesday night will be WWE Champions, more of the zombie mode, uh, or I should say the zombie event, all month long, new zombies and fun in the game. I'm finally going to get the zombie Chelsea Green. I'll have enough shards of her to recruit her this time and start using her. Um, and we'll have some fun there. And then Thursday, more Silent Hill 2. And then Thursday night will either be the Marvel vs. Capcom collection or Street Fighter 6, where I'll go back to picking one of the characters that I'm actually good with at master level. I'm undecided. We should talk about this in the next few days to actually determine what you guys want with fighting games this week because I'm not here Friday for Friday Night Fights, so essentially Thursday night is Friday Night Fights. And I want to know what you guys want for your fighting game fix. All right, so let's start talking about that. That's the week. I'm not here on Friday. And when I come back on Saturday, it's the premiere of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. All right, so good stuff coming up. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, so in regards to an interview this week, I've basically, I, I, the person who I, we were going to possibly do the interview with, I've been talking with them all week. And we actually decided that rather than an interview, we'd like to do something different together. So I'm going to let you guys know if and when that's happening. It's not going to be this week. It may be later in the month. It may be next month. We'll see. But rather than just do an interview that, honestly, I don't know if it would have been that exciting, to be, to be frank. It would have been nice, but I don't know if it would have been exciting. Uh, I think I'd rather do something else. So no interview this week. However, as you, as you know now with this thing going on with Review Tech, which we're going to talk about in a second, uh, sounds like now the rest of my month is opening up for interviews, and I have other potential candidates that I can say, hey, you want to come on? So we'll see. Maybe next week I'll have my next interview, okay? Okay, cool. Um, a couple quick shout-outs, and then we will continue on to the next topic at hand, okay? Cool. I received a $2 tip. Oh, uh, let's see here. From Hogan's for Grandma. <laughs> Hogan's for Grandma. Says, hey, Phil, I have a suggestion, unless you're doing this already. During your night pre-stream, you should log in the WWE Champions and get a daily login reward. Because I remember you saying you get rewards if you log in daily. Not only do you get rewards for logging in daily, but basically, if I every day if I play the game for like 5 to 10 minutes and I do what's considered the daily events, I will get what's called League Points. And the League Points allow me to League Up. And every month that I League Up, I can do more in the monthly event. Right now, I'm limited to what I can do in the monthly event because I'm a very low League. But if I were to log in every day and do it, probably in a month, I would League Up like three times. Right now, the best I could do is like one. So you're right. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe as I set up one of my streams. I can't do it in the morning because in the morning, it's definitely going to be... Uh, 
hectic I'm setting up for the podcast, but maybe you're right. Maybe on the, the night, night streams, I can find some time to do that, right? We'll have to see. Um, so thanks for that. Yes, thank you very much. $2 tip. And I also received a $1.25 tip. From Mr. Puppy Nipples. I'm actually glad Rich has backed out of the interview. He would act like a professional. He, he wouldn't act like a professional. He'd probably be high. He doesn't know how to be a professional. All right, thank you for that. So we are currently at <clears throat> $63 in contributions so far today. Let me take a look here. We've got, wait a minute. We got no super chats, no super stickers, and no memberships. Let's get some stuff going on that, uh, on that side, if you could, guys. You know, absolutely nothing on the YouTube side. I'm shocked. Because remember, this total includes Super Chats, Super Stickers, and Tips. It's not just Tips. So I'm actually shocked that no one has Super Chatted yet. Let's get that going. How are we doing today on the show? I haven't even looked yet. We're about 350 viewers and 54 likes. Thank you for that. Let's get it to 100 likes. Because, ladies and gentlemen, right now, yes, we're going to do it. We're going to start talking about Review Tech. This is going to be the next segment of the show. So let's get it going. Let's get some likes going on the stream. If you're here to have fun, please like the stream. If you're here for the Review Tech segment, it's time for it. And let's get some support going. Like I said, let's uh let's hit the goal. How about this? Let's hit this goal before the podcast ends. Then we don't even have to worry about the react stream because we're already there, right? Let's do it. Let's crush it. Let's hit number six and keep that momentum going towards the Krabby Patty meal DSP tries it. All right. <clears throat> Are we ready? Are y'all ready for this? All right, let's get to the let's get to this segment. All right, it's around 26 minutes. I try to remember these for when I click. Um, so here's the deal, folks. As you know, it's been a whirlwind few months for me here on YouTube and in general in life. Um, what a reversal of fortunes, right? I used to be the guy down on his luck. I used to be the whipping boy of the internet. I used to be the one that everyone crapped on, and it was, like, fun to do. But what happened was things had changed, right? Now... I actually have some positivity behind me. People are actually talking about me in a positive light. People are interested in either coming on my show or having me involved with some of their content. It's been a good couple of months. I've definitely seen an uptick in attendance, an uptick in support, and an uptick in positivity thrown my way. What's happened for Review Tech USA is actually the complete opposite. He's on a downward slope. He's on a downward spiral. And... This is the guy who bullied me and beat me up for years and years because it was popular to do and he'd always get a rise out of his audience when he did it. People were stupid and would go there and just pay him money to beat me up. And he basically conditioned his audience that this is the content he makes now, right? Like literally, that's what his audience expects whenever they're on stream with him because that's all he really does anymore, right? So, or at least I should say that's all that anyone cares about he does and then pays him to do. That's how I, that's how I should say it here. Um, Rich had a documentary come out by June the King completely destroyed the man to the point where since he's never been the same. He's completely, like, belted. He's eating edibles every day. You can tell he's visibly high on most of his streams. It's a, very, it's a rarity when he's not high on, on a stream. Um, his eyes are like this. He can barely keep them open. He's talking really slow. He's not witty anymore. Basically, he's lost his way. And I reacted to that documentary with the guys from Kino Casino. That's where the whole poker chip, I've got your last chip rich meme came from. It was very popular. Everyone loved it. And since then, I kind of laid off of the guy, right? But everyone said, including even Keemstar said this, you should have him on your show. You should have a conversation. It's going to be fascinating no matter what happens, whether it goes civilly, whether it goes horribly, whether you're at each other's throats or you actually have a, a conversation. It's going to be good content, right? So I tried to get him on the show immediately following that react about two months ago. He ghosted me. He absolutely refused to respond. Okay? This continued for almost two months. And then finally, about a week ago, I laid down the law. In a DM on Twitter, I told Rich, you've got to respond to this now. Because if you don't, you're never coming on my show ever. This is literally your last chance. If you don't respond, I'm moving on. And I don't ever want to talk about you or, or anything about you ever again. Then he responds. Oh, yes. Oh, I, I'll come on your show, Phil. So then we start talking about it back and forth. And <clears throat> we basically, as of two days ago, which I talked about on this very show, we locked it in that it would be sometime next week. We don't know exactly the date. And that's my fault because I don't have a set schedule. 
of exact days that I, I stream because my schedule fluctuates depending on my wife's work schedule so we can align our days off together. So couldn't lock in an exact date and time, but it was going to be the, the date range of like the middle of the month, like around like October 16, 17, 18, something like that. That's what we were doing, right? And that's where we left it two days ago. But then many of you contacted me in, the, in that 24 hours since I announced that I was going to have Rich on the show and said, Phil, don't do it. Here's a million laundry list reasons why. It won't be entertaining. It won't be fun. It's giving him a platform and he doesn't deserve it. He's going to be unprofessional. He's going to be high. He's going to say the N-word. I'm not kidding you. People even said that he's going to say the N-word. He's going to do all this stuff, right? If you want that segment, I did it yesterday. Go check that out. I even highlighted. There's a highlight video on this channel of that. So <clears throat> yesterday, I'm playing Silent Hill 2 all day long. I'm not paying any attention to anything else but Silent Hill. I don't care, right? Last night, one of my editors actually contacts me and says, are you aware <clears throat> that Rich backed out of the interview with you? I said, no, hold on. So I went to Twitter and I opened up my DMs and I'm like, there's nothing there. I said, he didn't back out of the interview with me. He, I, we haven't talked in two days. They go, no, 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 no. He streamed yesterday while you were streaming. He streamed and his entire stream was literally about you. And it was all negative dumping on you, watching detractor videos about you and crapping on you again. And basically in that, that stream he did that lasted about two hours, he, he announced he's not going to be on your show. And there's a laundry list of reasons why he's not going to be on your show. And he went over all, I was like, wait, what? Hold on. <clears throat> I have an open DM with this guy on Twitter where we're talking about him being on the show. The last correspondence we have is he's going to be on in the middle of October. He decided to live stream and make an, a public announcement to his viewers, but not to me, the guy whose show we're talking about. I just, I, do, I really don't know what to say. Like, do you not understand what adults fucking do? Adults don't go behind each other's backs and me, 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 me. They talk to each other. Right? If you didn't want to come on the show, you say, all right, changed my mind, Phil. I don't want to be on your show in the DM. You don't go stream about it to your audience to make drama content again for yourself. Right? It's just like, this fucking guy is just something else. I don't understand it. Why would anyone want to work with him when that's how he behaves? Right? So I have to hear about the fact that he isn't going to be on my show through a third party who just so happened to hear from another party because someone finally watched some of his content for a change. It's like, what? Right? So let's do it together. Well, here, you ready? Here we go. Because I don't even know. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what we're about to watch. I don't know what his reasons are because he didn't tell me. Here's his stream, by the way. So here's his stream from yesterday. Okay. Live streamed 16 hours ago. So that would have been what? Like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. yesterday? Something like that. Again, when I was doing my stream. Um, dethroned. Oh, man. Uh, guys, I've been dethroned. I don't know if you're aware. I've been completely dethroned. I, no one watches my content anymore. No one supports my content. It's all over. Because you remember... You know, Kino Casino was going to turn on me and they were going to turn me into like Carrie where they were going to drop the pig's blood on me, on my head. And, and that definitely happened, right? And then <clears throat> Keemstar was going to come on my show and he was going to rip me a new asshole. And then I was going to interview Craig and Craig was going to own me and that was going to be the end of me. Oh yeah, then the four-hour documentary about me by June the King was going to come out and that was going to end me. Like, all of these things in a row have just, just completely destroyed me as a man and a content creator. I can't face the internet anymore. Man, I'm a, I'm a felted, crushed, destroyed individual. Just because you idiotically make a title of the video dethrone, it doesn't mean anything. This is complete nonsense. Then he titles the video, A Message for a Man. I don't know what his idiotic uh, meme is about Phil is a man, but, you know, it's stupid. It's, he, he has these weird memes in his community that no one cares about but him and his, his stunted viewers. 
You know what I mean? Like, you know, who would care? Phil is a man. Yeah. And you're a dunce and no one cares. Well, what the fuck are you talking about? So anyway, I have two timestamps. The first timestamp apparently is when he announces that he's not going to be on my show. Okay. So let's, let's hear that. And then apparently the other timestamp is he gives the reasons why. All right. So let's go ahead and let's see what he has to say. Here we go. Bowler, I ain't going to do the fucking interview. I already see the drama sphere building around it. it was, oh, I can pause and replay good because it was lagging yesterday or the day before when I tried to do this. It was just me going on Phil's show. Wait, wait, hold then on. I would do it. First of all, hold on a second. He's high again. Look at him. Look at his eyes. Dude, his eyes are barely even open. What's in his hand? What the fuck is that? I guess we'll hit play again and see what that is. Look at his eyes, dude. This guy needs like toothpicks in his eye to keep his eyes open when he streams. Because he's so fucking high every single time that he's streaming. Right? He's vaping too. He's high and he's vaping. I mean... What else is he doing? Is, so he, he pops the edibles. He's vaping during his stream. Does he also sniff magic markers? Does he de pop some whippets too? Like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Can't he just do a stream? What the fuck is wrong with him? Oh, my God. But I know it's not going to just be that. Sorry, sorry, Rich. I was picking your nose there by accident. I'll get the cursor out of here. And, uh, <laughs> coward of what? Dude, what do I have to be a coward of? Think about it. He can't even speak coward of what? What do I have to be a coward of? That's not even correct. It's coward, afraid of what? What do I have to be afraid of? He's so high, he can't even formulate a fucking sentence properly. And he's trying to stream to make money. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> I'm not the person that scams someone oh. or multiple people. They're of his fans, I should say. Yes. For years upon years. Oh yes, all those insane scams that I ran, right? The charity that I ran and said that if I didn't do a certain goal by a certain amount, I would donate the money, and then I didn't donate the money, and then when the fans called me out for it. I just sat there insulting them on stream and begrudgingly donated the money live to try to save face. Oh, wait, that wasn't me. It was you, Rich. You were the one running scams, not me. The worst thing I ever did, ever, is I said, hey, support my content because I need help right now because I need to pay a bill or do this and do that, which was true. It shouldn't have been done that way. And now I know that. I know that the way that I did it was wrong and I've changed my ways, right? Now we have positive motivation for contributions. People want to contribute because they know there's improvements to the setup because they know I'll do special events like this cool DSP tries it that I'm going to do this weekend and stuff like that. We get, it's excitement for the content and for the hype of the stream versus, oh, please, what was me? Help me. I get that now. All right. You know, I was in a really bad situation, but I didn't scam my viewers. What are you talking about? What elaborate scams did I ever run? I would love to hear someone outline this multifaceted, complicated, multi-tiered scam that I ever fucking ran ever in history of me being a content creator. The worst you can come up with was 10 years ago when I first launched my Patreon, I, I fumbled a few level tiered goals and I didn't reboot Project 7. That's the worst you could come up with. And that's like nine years ago. So where's your fucking narrative, dude? What are you talking about? I'm not the scam master. If I were, no one would watch my content and support me. I haven't scammed anyone. This is the false narrative, the straw man you create to feel better about yourself so you can rag on me every day with no substance. The fuck are you talking about? He just admitted it to that guy who was on the wrestling show. What? Did I do that? 
What are you talking about? The Cultaholic interview? Where I said, yeah, the WWE, it was the WWE champion stage, which everyone knows about, which is, what are you talking about? <laughs> he has no point at all. Literally, that whole Cultaholic interview was me talking about wrestling and the WWE champions thing that I've already told everyone about publicly already. So what are you talking? There's no scam there. N not at all. He ha I don't even know what the fuck. Again, this guy, he gets high and he just regurgitates his dumb negative memes with no substance. What do I have to hide? I have nothing to hide. And that's why no one likes you. Because every, all your shit's been exposed, all your dirty laundry, and everyone knows what a scumbag you are now. So that's why, you, yeah, you have nothing to hide because there's nothing, to, no one cares. There's no positivity associated with you ever again. People are tuning into your stream just to fucking felt you and insult you and throw, like the person who contributed and called you a coward, right? And that's why you read it out. That's your content now. Because you've been exposed, and now there's nothing to hide anymore, but now everyone hates you. Exactly right. The problem is... is the sharks or the piranhas let's actually call them piranhas are waiting to smell the blood in the water so kino casino because no one else is going to do it maybe lol cow live might cover it briefly but mostly kino casino that's about it so two sharks who already by the way are going to make fun of you non-stop anyway so it doesn't matter if they make fun of you further or not it's just going to happen Right? And I'll repeat this again when and if there's more people here. I'm not in the mood for it. it th that's a chapter. Of Dude, he's so slow. There's this giant pause. And the hamster in his head has to run a little bit faster in the wheel. Oh, shit. He needs another thought. Hold on. Ooh, get the next thought. Get the next thought. Come on, you fucker. Say the next thing. Something's going wrong. I swear I'm still running. Why is there no thought coming out of his mouth? Jeez. <laughs> this is... He says, uh, I'm not in the mood for it. Then why did you agree to it? I told you in an ultimatum, I said... Either agree to it or we're never doing it. It's that simple. Because I, I want to move on. I'm not going to have this lingering forever. Either you say yes now or we're never doing it. And he said, okay, I'll do it. Now I'm not in the mood for it. Then why did you say you wanted to do it? Like, so by the way, this is the second now, the second major bitch out of people. No one wants to go up against the king at all. Ralph, Ethan Ralph. He's going to do the Fuck Phil Festival completely bitches the fuck out of doing it and makes the most lame excuses as to why he's a coward. Now, Rich, I'm going to be on your show two days later. I'm not in the mood for it. No, you're a bitch. You bitched out. If you never wanted to be on, you ne just don't say a word. But you bitched out. That's two in a row. Two in a row. Keep in mind, LTG won't even engage at all, won't even be a professional and play ball. So I guess technically that's three. So how many more? Right? How many more fucking people are going to bitch out of interacting with the king? Am I really that scary? Am I... Hold on. Am I a scary dude? Like, look, hold on a second. Am I... I mean, I lost some weight, so maybe I don't look like a blob anymore. But I haven't really... I'm not jacked. I haven't been working out in that regard. Right? And I don't know. I'm kind of confused. But what is going on right now... <laughs> What is going on right now that people don't want to engage in? I'm, I'm lost. Because remember, when I was the whipping boy of the internet, correct? Everyone wanted to rag on me. Everyone wanted me on their show. Everyone wanted to interact with Dark Side Phil because you could dunk on me. But now things have changed. Now the tables have turned. You don't want to get dunked on by Phil, so now you don't want the interaction. This fucking guy tried to get me on his show for like five years. He kept saying he wanted me on his show. He wants me in his content. I DM'd him on Twitter to wish his daughter well when I found out she was sick. And the next words out of his mouth were, hey, you want to come on the show? But now he realizes the tables have turned. He wants nothing to do with me whatsoever, right? The fuck, dude? You can't have it both ways. You're a mega ultra bitch. That's the only way to, 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 
to quantify this. You're a bitch. You only want involvement when you have the upper hand and it benefits you. The moment now that everyone hates your ass because they've been exposed for who you really are, while I've been exposed and everyone still fucking likes me, you've been exposed and everyone hates you. Oh, I want nothing to do with Phil. I'm not in the mood, right? Okay. Uh, by the way, thank you, Perry the White, for a 10 uh, pound super chat. He says, a glorious feltoning my liege. Well, we're only getting started. We're only getting started. Trust me. We're going to continue on. Let's go. Let's keep going with this video. All right. I want to really, I want to, I want to get to the bottom of this shit. ...of mine that's closed, and I know there are people, even people that you would be surprised about, that are just waiting for me to dive back into that bullshit. Hard pass, no fucking thank you. Then why did you say yes? <laughs> why did you even say it? You could have just never responded. And I would have said, okay, case closed. And I would have reblocked him on Twitter because I don't want to ever see his bullshit tweets from his timeline. It's terrible, right? It's, it's, it's such a toxic shit that he puts on Twitter. I want nothing to do with it. And I never would have brought it up. We wouldn't have had all these segments that have been going on the last few days. It's his own doing is the reason why this is happening. I didn't create the situation. He did. He responded. He's engaging. So now all this content comes out of it. It's your fault, right? So what the fuck? And then he bitches out. Thank you to I'm Troublesome. 140 czar super chat, which is the equivalent of eight bucks I know from yesterday. He says, Phil Tim King, it's your turn, bro. Slay the dickers. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much for that. We're up to 81 bucks in contributions, so we're more than halfway to the goal already. Okay. Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> oh, he's having a lucid dream. He's seeing shit. There's unicorns and rainbows in front of him right now. He's like, oh, oh, we're, uh, oh, stream. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> he took like 10 seconds to say, so. <laughs> Yo, I should have done this sooner. Why didn't I do this sooner? This is fucking hilarious, dude. This guy. The fact he even turns on his fucking stream like this is such an embarrassment. And the fact that he thinks this is fucking content is, is ludicrous. Oh, my God. That is what it is. What the fuck? He didn't say anything in, like, a minute. Like, I, dude, don't you think it would be comedic gold? I would absolutely love to do it. And I would be like, hey, Phil, why do you owe $20,000? Why are you saying that the Homeowners Association is making you pay $20,000 to, I've never heard, I mean, homeowners associations, they could do some stuff. What is he talking about? What, what is he talking about? I don't, I never said anything about a homeowners association making me pay $20,000. What? He made that up. Or, okay, here's the truth. Much like every other dunce, he probably just watches my detractors videos. And as we know, they literally make shit up. This is probably he watched do D streams, right? Do D streams or something like that. And he heard some wild, insane narrative story, right? That's not true. So he listens to it. He believes it because he's a fucking moron. He doesn't understand that everything my detractors say is actually fabricated. So he pro there's probably some normal innocuous story, some normal thing that I just talked about on a stream one day. My detractors turned it into an insane conspiracy theory, nonsensical story that's not true. This dunce watches their content. He believes it, right? And then he fucking comes out and says it as a fact. I don't understand why your, why your condo association needs $20,000 from you. They don't. What are you talking about? That never happened. Never. Here, okay. Someone's trying to explain to me what the situation is. I read an email. No, I didn't. I paraphrased about them saying you need to replace your sewer pipes. You said you would need money in the future for it. Literally, that's completely false. What happened was, my condo association sent an email out in general to everyone who lives here saying, FYI, everyone's homes now are around 25, 30 years old. The pipes eventually will probably need to be replaced because originally they were PVC piping, but now there's a new standard. FYI, it'll probably cost you this much if you do it preventatively. It'll probably cost you this much if they break and you have to replace everything in an emergency. And I think the emergency cost 
is like $20,000, okay? So that's all it is. There's no condo association demanding I pay $20,000 for anything. It was a FYI informative email. What the fuck is he talking about? See what I'm saying? But he probably watched a detractor who lied about it, made it up to be something it wasn't, and now he believes it, and that's just his narrative. Just like he probably liter literally legitimately believes I have scammed my viewers for stuff when it never happened because he watches the detractor shit. He is as dumb as anyone who watches the detractor content. He just blindly believes it with no evidence, no justification, out of context clips and spin. He's that dumb. He's the target audience for those people, you know? That's, that's pretty sad. By the way, Andy, thank you for gifting me five memberships. Five people in the community just got memberships. I appreciate that. Uh, a couple tips have come in. I received a $5 tip from Real Scam USA. Rich is the most miserable human ever. Well, thank you for the $5 tip there. And let's see if this is legit or not. Nope. Ignore that. Okay. Let's continue. They can't make you do something like that. Because they're, yeah, no shit. As far as I know. The only way they could do that is if, uh, if, you know, you were violating the rules, like a serious violation of the rules of the condo, they could try to evict you. They can't hit you with a $20,000 fine to replace your pipes. No. I never said they were either. You're just an idiot. You believe what you're told because you're dumb. With the minimal research I did into it. And even if you actually do need that 20 grand, how in your right mind are. Wait, he's gonna. Is he about to say I asked the audience for 20 grand? Is that serious? If he, I can't believe it. No, no. He's not gonna do that. And by the way, I swear to you, I've not seen this clip yet. There is no way he actually believes I asked my audience for $20,000. There's no fucking way he's about to say that on his stream. Right? Please. <clears throat> and away we go. Are you going to ask your audience or even even talk about money, even if you're not asking them, talking about money with them after what you admitted? So. So wait a minute, let me get this straight. I just want to get this straight. I can never speak about money in any capacity ever again. Because I admitted that I played WWE champions. <laughs> Never again can I mention a dollar in my life because I said I played WWE champions. Right? I mean, let's think about this. I literally am playing WWE champions twice a week on stream, raising money and spending money on the game publicly. People are still coming back and watching my content, enjoying the content, and supporting the content, despite the fact they know I play WWE Champions. Okay? What is the point of what he's saying? He doesn't have a point. At all. At all. He never had a point. All the shit he always ragged on me for, he literally never had a valid point. But he gets his audience riled up. He jumps into tractor memes. And dumb people believe that shit. What happened is he conditioned his audience over the years. It's the A-Log Phil segment, everyone. Let's get, let's do it. And then they'd all get ramped up for it. But there's no substance to any of it. There never was substance to anything he did about me. He just repeated the shit he saw in detractor videos. Just like he would very arbitrarily cover news stories and regurgitate what he saw in the news story. Not really adding much commentary or spin, just regurgitating news. Oh, that's my content. Don't regurgitate what the detractors say. That's my content. He's literally a lifetime regurgitator. Look at him. Doesn't he, look, he looks like he's about to regurgitate right now. Look at him. He's going to explode. <laughs> all right. Combined with everything that we've all had questions about, even though we already knew, that you have confirmed... I don't have anything else for you, Phil. So you're admitting you just have nothing to offer at all to the world. There's nothing left. You're tapped out. You, you've done your shtick endlessly. We all know what to expect from Rich from now on. If you come on my show, we do an interview, you have nothing to say because you literally don't have an intelligent thought in your head. 
you would need a script of detractor memes over here to read from or a new story to regurgitate to get any kind of like entertainment value. You're admitting this now publicly on your own stream. You're self-felting yourself right now. Very nice. You're, you're an interesting guy in terms of the fact that the people that you're buddying up with, man, they are just putting you through the ringer right now. I said this part the other day. What? What? Yeah, I show receipts. Huh? And then the other thing, this is why I have this here, by the way. What is he talking about? He went. On, he's, he just did three separate points. The guys you're teaming up with are putting you through the ringer. Who has put me through the ringer? What are you talking about? Huh? You can't just make a statement, but then not, like, explain it. Because you could be like, the sky is purple, you know, shit smells like roses, and, you know, chocolate is disgusting. All right, are you going to justify anything you just said? Or are you going to just say random fat statements that don't have make any sense? You have to, like, what? No one has put me through the ringer. I'm having a good time right now. I'm in the, the busiest gaming season of the year. I'm starting to cover the new releases. Things are picking up in my own content. I'm working on interviews. I actually have multiple people lined up who want to do an interview on my channel. I'm actually working on some collabs right now. Actually, I'm working on two different collabs that I'm going to work on with diff different various people. I'm having a great time with life. Who's putting me through the ringer exactly? He's, uh, he's such a weird guy. <laughs> I'm the wait. Look at him. <laughs> I'm the weird guy? Rich, I'm the weird guy? I'm the normal... Look at me. Okay. I'm just some dude. I'm having fun with life. I'm here. I got silly stuff behind me. I got some entertaining lighting. I'm just some guy wearing a shirt in his office. My cat's laying here with me having a good time while I talk with an audience. We're having a good time together, right? I'm the weird guy, right? Rich, I want you to look at your own stream. Behind you, you have a bedroom lamp. You have your own case of poker chips that looks like you copied mine because mine's over there. It looks like you bought the same one and you have it in your background, right? You have a keyboard next to you, but you're not a musician, right? To your right, you have a boom box. Who the fuck still has a boom box in 2024? You have a monitor that you don't even bother turning on anymore. The most exciting thing about Rich's setup is that right over here, he has a bottle of screen cleaner. That's very exciting. And by the way, it's Insignia, which is the, the bootleg brand that Best Buy sells. I can even tell you where he got it from. It's the Best Buy screen cleaner right there. Like that's, this, you know, this is his setup. This is professional setup. He's turning on his stream to make money today, right? This is what he presents to his audience. But uh, I'm the weird guy. I'm the oddball weirdo, right? <laughs> you can't make this shit up, man. He goes to me, you know, you know, Phil, with his his yeah, crazy rants Phil. that he does. I've shown oh, yes. emails where they're like seven pages long, like he's a scorned ex -girl girlfriend. One of the things he said to me was, if you come on the show, like almost like a dad. I should show the DM. I don't fucking care. He he really should. He what he probably needs is it a parental figure in his life or a life coach at this point? Because obviously this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, right? So let's see what he says. You can't do. You cannot come on baked. I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't care. I I'm like, Fush. wait, what did he say? You cannot do. You cannot come on. Oh, baked. I couldn't hear it. Okay, sure, Phil. That's fine. When I was going on, absolutely not. I would be sober as a judge. Not a problem. But the interesting thing about it, I'm like, dude, you just got caught. Mm -hmm. You're grandstanding to me right now, and you just got caught. Probably taking six figures. Maybe even a deep six figures from your audience saying you need the money for your bills when you were mm -hmm. using the money for something else. And this here mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm still waiting is a bridge too far i'm still i'm still waiting 
the WWE champions thing is not true. I've already said the stuff that people have said about the level of spending and stuff has always been a lie. Okay. Have I spent money on WWE champions? Yes, I have. Was that down from the rafters account mine? Yes, it was. I've admitted to all of this because it's all true. Okay. But the level of spending that people have said has always been a false narrative. They've made it up. They've over-exaggerated. They, they purposefully miscalculated to always say it's way more than it ever was, right? You have literally no idea how much money I make, how much came in from the audience and other things, what I spent on what. You literally watch my detractors' videos and you regurgitate toxic content as fact. You are a hack. Do you understand? Your gripe with me is this crazy narrative, right? That even if it were completely true, the internet's okay with. You understand that? That even if it were 100% completely true, nobody cares. Now, the funny part is, it's not 100% completely true, but it doesn't even matter, right? So let me get that straight. I don't want you on my show baked because I don't think it would be good content. You just embarrass yourself like you're doing right now and like you do every day. I want you to have intelligent, coherent thoughts so that our time together is meaningful. We have a conversation, whether we're at each other's throats or we're just having a, sh a chill conversation or somewhere in between. At least then people can say, well, Rich was coherent for that and it was worth our time. If you come on my show and you're baked and you're saying, Duh, uh, so, uh, what? No one's going to want you on the show, including me. And I already said, I would just dump you from the show if you came on like that. This is not some wild thing. This is like a reasonable thing to say of anyone who's going to have you in their content, right? But to you, it's like anything that I would request of him is completely outlandish, right? Because he is so above reproach and so fucking perfect. And, you know, I mean, we're talking about Phil here, God's fucking most hated villain character because he played mobile games and spent some of the money that he raised on his streams on mobile games. He's insane. I don't, I really don't know what else to say. Like his reasoning doesn't make any sense at all. No one else cares besides my detractors because that gives them content. So is he just outright full-blown admitting he's a, he's a full-on detractor? If that's the case, he literally should just adopt the whole thing. He should join the community of duty streams and memeology and the super crazy and everyone else. He should just be, admit to it and join the group. You're already drinking the Kool-Aid. You might as well just become one of their associated circle jerking group at this point because this is the content you're putting out. You're just, you're just repeating their memes with no corroboration. The same nonsense no one cares about. Even if it were completely true, still no one would care about it and it's not even true. Wow, look at this. I just received a ton of support. Five gifted memberships from Perry the White. Five gifted memberships from I'm Troublesome, a gifted membership from AKA BKB, and a gifted membership from Swag Onito. Thank you, all of you, for your support this morning. I really appreciate it. I even got a $2 uh, tip here. When the prey becomes the hunter, keep pushing the king, keep pushing king, F your haters. Thank you very much for the $2 tip there. We're at 88. Guys, we are, we're almost there. Like I said, it would be great. We hit it by the end of the podcast. It would be perfect. So thank you so much for all the support. Perry the White just gifted another membership. Congrats to everyone getting them here this morning. Or this afternoon, I should say now. All right. I mean, this, this video is ridiculous. It's, he, it's two hours. Two fucking hours. I'm just curious if I go ahead here. It's just him talking. And he's watching some... Okay, he finally gets to Wings. And he watches some Wings content. Thankfully, it's not all about me, right? It's a lot of Wings. A ton of Wings, actually. So wait a minute, is he now going to become a Wings troll instead of a, a DSP troll? <laughs> is this his big announcement? Well, I'm too pussy to be on the show. So what I need to do is uh, I need to basically now talk about Wings for the entire show instead. Right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, by the way, you're right. I did, not put, I did not put this top super chatter on the leaderboard, and that's my fault. It is Perry the White who's the top super chatter with a 10... Uh, pound super chat. Let me get Perry on the leaderboard. That's my fault. And also, thank you because it was actually Andy who just did a super chat to tell me that I forgot to put Perry on the leaderboard. And that's a two, two pounder there from from Andy, I believe. 
Excellent. All right, let's get Perry on the leaderboard. Thank you, Perry. It's 10 pounds. Isn't that the equivalent of like 12 bucks? I'll say 12. I think it's about 12 bucks. The pound is worth more than a dollar right now. So, okay. Well, I mean, at this point, let's watch a little more. But if he doesn't really have anything to say, I don't think there's anything else left to say. I'll say my final word. And by the way, we did see the comments on this video. We're going to look at some of those comments, okay? So literally, the only argument he has is WWE champions. The argument that's done with, that's completely dealt with, nobody cares about it ever ever again. I literally play the fucking game on my streams and spend money on it, and no one cares. Everyone still comes back and enjoys the content. So he has no point. That's literally, he has no point. His, he scams his viewers. Is He asks viewers for money, and he spent some money on a mobile game. That's his argument. So he has no argument. Okay, I'm glad we established that, because I find it hilarious. This is his coping session of why he's not coming on my podcast. I'm going to tell you why he's really not coming on in a second, but let's continue. But again, that's fine. But... It fell. Yo, it fell. <laughs> it fell off his desk. It bounced. He put it on top of that thing, but he hit it, and he's so high, it went boom, and it flew off his desk onto the floor. <laughs> you just befuddled me, man. You, I, don't I befuddle you? Understand. Rich, I think at this point, pretty much everything befuddles you. I mean, take a look at you. I mean, how could anything not be befuddling you at every moment? If a breeze comes in your fucking room, you're like, whoa, bro, what's that? Holy shit. <laughs> in yourself, Phil. I've said this before. I don't think you understand how it's you'll be a judge of someone's character with something. Someone was saying it's something to me today. Like you were going by tractor videos, we'll call them. I believe about me when you complain about other people looking at the tractor videos of you. Do you like, why am I going to talk to you? It, it's a lost cause. Wait, 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 wait. No way. Did, he just said that, right? I didn't hear that. I, I, no, I heard that. I didn't hallucinate it because I'm, see, I'm not high. So I know that what I'm hearing actually just happened. He is literally criticizing me. Because I watched Kino Casino on this show two days ago, and they were ragging on him. That's not acceptable to him. Every single fucking time he turns on his stream, he watches detractor videos about me, and that's fine. But the moment that I finally watched a detractor video about him, oh, that's the end of the world. I mean, do you want to talk about hypocrisy? This man is a walking hypocrite in every fucking sense of the word, right? Like, what the fuck? The things that you criticize me for, like, oh, you scammed your audience or whatever. That's things that are in my past. I've moved past. I'm changing for the better. I'm now doing positive reinforcement for contributions. I'm not sitting here begging to pay bills, right? I'm doing good things and changing for the better. I'm not doing those things anymore. Just like the other day, that moron cog making fun of me for putting on the hat and the vest. I don't even do that anymore. That's what he's making fun of me for. So you're making fun of shit that I've learned from and I've changed from and I, of the past. Literally, the things that you don't like is everything you've been doing every fucking day you turned on your camera. You're making fun of people for being lol cows. You're the biggest one. You're angry at me because I responded to a detractor video about you. That's all you do in regards to me. When was the last time you actually watched a video from my channel and not a detractor video, right? The fuck are you talking about, you insane fucking hypocrite? You're a fucking loser. You don't have the right to say you're upset that I watched a detractor video when it's all you do every fucking time you turn on your stream, dude. What the hell? You either just are flat out hypocritical and don't care that you're hypocritical, or you have less self-awareness than I even knew that you already didn't have. I was well aware when I watched the Kino Casino clip on this show two days ago, it was going to piss him off. I knew it. Because I know that Rich loves to give, but he can't take, right? He doesn't understand that in the game of the internet, it's about give and take. Okay, I got you here, but then you get me here, then I get you here, and now we all have content to make. <clears throat> you want to know who knows and understands that game very well? Keemstar. Keemstar gets it, right? I'll talk shit about you on Twitter. That allows you to talk shit about me on your show, and we go tit for tat, and it's entertainment, right? 
this guy, well, I should be able to do everything. God forbid that you do the same thing to me. Completely unacceptable. Like, you're a fucking idiot, dude. You don't get it. You just don't get it. You don't get life. You thought that you were better than everyone else because you were a million sub YouTuber getting views and attention and popularity and money. And now it's all gone. All of your popularity is gone. And now that fucking curtain's been drawn back. It's like you're the fucking Wizard of Oz behind the curtain, right? And everyone sees you for what you really are now. And people don't like you anymore. And now you can't cope. You're trying to cope so desperately with your existence. So now Phil's bad because he watched a detractor video about me. By the way, let's watch a bunch of detractor videos about Wings of Redemption. This is fun. This is great. What's a hypocrite? I never heard of one, right? The fuck are you talking about, dude? What is he doing? So, I don't <sighs> even know. Who the hell knows? Maybe Whoa, this is what was that? for me to not do the interview. You do what you gotta do, but I would personally not waste my time on who time who belittles me every time my name is mentioned. I feel like your appearance would just be an hour of him coitizing you and, and then it cuts off. Oh, man. all over right now and if it was just phil it would be comedic gold but i already see the usual suspects coming back and i'm not talking about the two people that many people are thinking of um other people too and i'm like nah man stay stay away do we do stay in your lane i'll stay in my lane you're like chomping at the bit for this to happen. And it's just weird. Why? What's weird about it is no, actually the opposite has happened. So many people went to me and said, don't do it. They came to me and said, don't have this man on your show because it's not meaningful content. It's just going to be a waste of everybody's time. And don't give him a platform. I don't know who he's talking about outside of Kino Casino. No one really can. Maybe Lol Cow Live would jump on for like one stream. They would bring it up. Like, there's no one, even in the drama sphere, that's like wants to really talk about Rich that much anymore. Since his documentary came out, and now this is the mess that he is, no one cares anymore. Like, I'm actually giving him the opportunity at some attention for the first time. No one wants to deal with this man. So, I don't even know what he's talking about here. Like, he's, I think he's in his own weird hallucinog hallucinogenic world here, where he actually is believing this, but it's not true at all, okay? <clears throat> He's drinking wheelchair to it. What's up, Bone Score? Thank you for being a member for over two years. Are we done? Yeah, Is that, that it? Fucking retard. I forgot his name. Yeah, dude, there's people right now that are like really hope like because it would be all right. It would be a content farm for them. Basically, this guy. He's become so paranoid because he's high all the time. He actually believes that, like, there's a lot of people out there that want to milk him for content. In reality, that couldn't be further from the truth. Like, I just kind of want to finish the story and stop the, end the narrative here because the narrative is he's fallen from grace. I was supposed to fall from grace and the opposite, opposite happened, right? I felted this fucking guy so bad watching his documentary. I've got his final chip. And I felt like it would be closure to have him on the show, whether it went it was a funny interview or whether, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, no matter how it went, it would have been good content. But the guy is such a coward and he's so paranoid now that he just can't, he won't do anything. No, the sharks are circling. Dude, no one cares about you at all. It would be a, it would be a one-off situation where they react possibly to the interview and then they move on and they never mention you ever again because you're not pertinent. You get it? The reason people bring me up all the time is because I'm still pertinent. Despite the fact that people don't like me, I'm still pertinent. You have no pertinence in any sphere, drama sphere, reviewing sphere, news sphere, whatever sphere it is, you're not part of it. You know, no one is thinking about Review Tech USA. All right. So first of all, this is what's so funny about it. I have some shout outs to do. Patrick, thanks for a $5 super chat. RTU grasping at straws. Keep winning, King. Thank you, Patrick. And then also, I got another tip here. A $2 tip. From Stuart. Poor Dickers couldn't make it as a content creator. 
Can't make it as a musician. Failed at a lol cow. Now he's struggling to make it as a detractor. He really is on that last chip. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I don't even think he even knows what he is. I, I, to be honest, I don't think he cares. Um, he has no self-respect. I mean, that's why he, he acts the way he does, right? DJ Sonic Swag with a $2 super chat. D King DSP4 and Rich Zero. Thank you so much. We're at $99 of support, guys. Thank you so much. We're almost two-thirds of the way to the goal. Um, but what I want to show you guys, because I just happened to, I was wondering, I was like, how many views did this video get? And, and what kind of comments? First of all, for the record, this is an archived live stream. This is not an on-demand video. An archived live stream counts all of the viewers who were there live, plus adds additional viewers after the fact who watch it. So this stream, 3,759 views. Just for the record, all of my streams beat his. I know this isn't like a pissing contest or a competition, but like, no lie, like yesterday when I was streaming Silent Hill, my archive stream has over 6,000 views, but that doesn't count the fact that I also do these videos after the fact. Because remember, when I'm done with a stream, I actually archive it so no one else can see it. And then I, up I upload the videos separately after the fact. So my live stream yesterday had 6,000 views. And then all the videos after are going to get hundreds to probably a thousand views right? His stream barely can get 4,000 views and it's, it's archived, meaning he didn't private it. So it would stop getting views. It's still getting new views and counting. And that's the best he can do. Wow. And that's me. I'm just Mr. Nobody, right? On YouTube. I'm beating Rich every day in views. When he streams, I'm beating him. Hands down, easily I'm beating him. Okay. Let's take a look at the comments. So this is another video of Rich watching DSP detractor videos and adding the same old comments. Pass. Thanks for the comments, folks. I thought I missed something. Yeah, like literally that's what, his, what this content has become is that he basically just regurgitates everything about my detractors talking about me. He doesn't add anything. He doesn't intelligently analyze it. He just regurgitates detractor memes. You're right. This rich dude with his stupid applause button. This is sad. Quantum TV. Gets more views than Rich now. If you don't know, Quantum TV is a, a creator who he had a beef with a couple years ago. And the entire internet dumped on him at once. He had his big lol cow fall from grace too. Um, and Rich was definitely one of them. And now the people are saying Quantum TV is better. Rich whines about DSP watching detractor videos of him while Rich himself watches DSP detractor videos. I saved you two hours of, of DSP rambling. Rich is still more entertaining than Phil's boring ass. All right, someone likes Rich more. Now, here's the thing. Entertainment is in the eye of the beholder. Are you entertained by watching Rich because you're watching the train wreck? The guy who's high and fucking can't do anything of intelligence, right? If that's the case, yeah, when you go to my streams, you'll see a train wreck when I play Street Fighter and I rage. And outside of that, it's kind of, you know, not really like that. So, yeah, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for the lol call and, you know, train wreck shit, you're not going to really see it here, but you'll see it on his streams and you'll have a good laugh. You're right. Two-hour stream, no real content about Phil after 38 minutes. You didn't watch and let, leave a comment. Good job. I do like how Kino gaslit DPS into confessing he has spent all that money on mobile games. Kino did not gaslight me into confessing anything. I didn't confess that I spent all that money on mobile games. Do you see what I mean? This is the insanity of the detractor sphere. They actually believe this, this thing. They literally believe that I was gaslit into confessing some heinous crime when I didn't confess what they think I confessed and it wasn't a heinous crime. And they didn't gaslight me into anything. You see what I... It's just insane. This is actually sad. Rich, get some help. We're just slowly becoming what he makes fun of, which is what I just said. Banned. Bro said it's a lost cause, yet a few minutes ago he said it would be comedy gold to chat with Phil, so which is it? Bark like the pug, I'm so disappointed as a fan. You knew damn well when you accepted the interview you weren't going to go follow through -ing. It's going to be too much drama, it's such a pathetic and Phil-like excuse. <laughs> there you go. It's a BS excuse, he loves drama, it's all he ever talks about. Rich, you're the lo you've lost the plot, man. You totally haven't scammed or shortchanged or cheated anyone out of anything. Now you're an upstanding person who would, who would never, for example, set a goal and say, if you don't meet a goal, you'll donate. Then when the goal is missed, you scream and cry at the people who said, make the donation. You're such a joke. This one's an L. You should have gone on. I could keep going. I don't think we need to read every comment. 
You should have gone on a show to challenge him, especially since you have facts and knowledge to easily hit Phil with. He has no facts or knowledge. He has detractor memes that aren't true. The narrative is that you just talk about him all day and have no other content except him. Now that you've had a chance to talk to him and didn't, it's a missed opportunity. I mean, literally, this is his stream, and the first thing he did was talk about me for the first segment. So m the point is true. Let's see here. Right, I'm done. I don't even want to really wa read any more comments, but here's the deal, all right? I have one final thing to say about Review Tech. I'm going to finish this right here because I really, at this point, like, when I did the React last month with the Kino guys, and I had the last chip, all right? I'll be honest, I thought either that was going to be the last time I was going to talk to the guy, or it could go differently, and he could come on my show, and we could actually hash it out. The reason I held on to this chip, folks, okay? The reason I held on to this chip is because I wanted to see that when that man was publicly exposed and felted to the internet, would he actually, like, fess up to his shortcomings and change and become a better person because of this, or would he continue to spiral downward? It has now been a month and a half since this, and Rich has continued to spiral downward worse and worse. He's not getting any better. When he sees a glimmer of hope, I'm going to do a sober stream, and the stream's actually better. Then all of a sudden, boom, he's high again on the next stream. This man, sadly, needs an intervention. He does. He needs a big brother. He needs a father. He needs a relative. He needs someone to jump into his life to help him because it's obvious he has no self-control whatsoever, and he's not going to get better unless he has an intervention. And in truth, the real reason that I still have this chip is because what I really wanted to do, now I'm going to spoil, guys. You ready? Because he's not going to be on my show ever, right? He's not. He's never going to be. He just admitted it. He's never coming on. <clears throat> I was going to have him on my show and I was going to talk out some topics and it was going to be a little bit heated. By the end of the show, all right, I was going to tell him that I forgive him for all the things that he's done to me over the years, that I want to be the better man and I want to move forward positively with my life and he should too. And we could agree to be respectful to each other moving forward. And I was going to tell him that if that's the case, I was going to take this chip and I was going to give it to him. And that way he could say he has it. And that he can make a better life and he can turn it around for the better. Because I don't want this. You understand? I don't want this chip. I want him. I want to feel like this guy can be a better guy. And that he can change for the better. But he's shown no, no way to do that at all. Like I've tried so hard. I stopped talking about him for a month and a half. I tried to have him on the show. I just wanted to have a nice moment with the man. Um. And I can't. He won't let me. You understand? He just won't let me do it. So, sadly, this chip will never go back to Rich. I guess I have to keep it forever. I don't want it. I literally wanted to help the man and show some respect and be like, I wish you the best in the future. Now we can be, let's, let's move forward and forget everything that's happened in the past like it never happened. And let's just, you know, whether it means that we forget about each other and we don't mention each other ever again or whatever. But sadly, as you can see, he can't do that. This guy is in an endless downward spiral. He can't change for the better. He can't improve, okay? So since this is the last time that I'm going to talk about Rich, all right? I'm just going to say a few things. I'm going to vent a little bit. All right, Rich, I'm going to tell you something right now, all right? The only reason, the only reason that I allowed you to crap on me for the last decade is because I had an insane hate mob of people on my back, all right? If I even tried to defend myself or lash back or clap back or whatever they call, no one would care because everyone thought I was the living meme of the guy to hate. But that's changed, right? Sure, my detractors still exist, but they've been exposed as unhinged idiots. Everyone knows this. I have newfound popularity, people who want to work with me again. Things are different, right? So what happened was you worked yourself into this false sense of security over the last decade where you thought, oh, it's just an easy way to punch down at Phil. I'm a million sub YouTuber. Keep punching down Phil. And you conditioned your audience to want to see that content because you knew it was an easy payday. On a day when you had nothing to offer the internet, it was crap on Phil day. Turn on a detractor video, just sit there and laugh and make fun and make money, right? That's what you did for a decade. And you might say, well, it was easy to do. It was only easy because I allowed you to do it. Do you understand me? At any moment, I could have just actually intelligently responded to you. 
and you would have fallen a fuck apart because nothing you've ever said or did has substance. Literally all the content you make, your news, your reacts and drama, all this shit, it's all fluff. Rich, if all of your content was deleted from the internet today, no one would miss you or care. It's that simple. No one would miss you or care. I have a 16-year catalog of playthroughs, reviews, and content that if it disappeared from the internet, people would be genuinely upset. They'd be like, where is Phil's content? Where did he go? This sucks. Even if they don't like the new stuff, the classic stuff, right? If you were erased from YouTube, people would be like, oh, anyway, moving on. No one would care because you don't make any meaningful content and you never did. Do you understand me? The vile things you said and did about me and my family and shit, that's a good one. I don't have a family. He's actually said this repeatedly over and over. I don't have a family. Okay, Rich, I need to explain something to you, okay? <clears throat> Just because you chose to use your dick to reproduce doesn't make you better than me. The fact that I've had multiple relationships in my life that I'm happily married and I chose not to reproduce was an intelligent decision that I made. It's called self-control. You understand? I made the decision to not reproduce you don't have a one-up on me because you have children, right? You don't. In fact, that's some of the shit people make fun of you for, for the way that you've handled your family business. And that's your own fault for putting it on the internet. Do you understand? You're not a bigger man than me because you have kids. You're in fucking sane if you believe that, right? I have a family. I'm married. I have a pet. I have parents. I have other relatives. I have a family unit established and it's just as important and meaningful to me as yours is to you and the fact that you think that you could dangle that over the internet and be like oh i have a family and he doesn't you're insane you're absolutely fucking insane you're a weak little man you understand okay i take that back you're weak but you're not little you're definitely not little holy shit but you're a person who is so insecure and everyone knows it right that you tried to make that a way to make money. As I said, the moment that you put the clown makeup on, it never washes off, right? When I stream, I strive to put out positive content for my audience, something that's entertaining and fun, sometimes informative, sometimes it's cre creative. Depends, because I make so many kinds of content. You don't even do that. Every time you turn on your stream, you're turning on the clown show. You're turning on the living embarrassment to the internet. Every day that you stream, it's the same. Do you understand? I had my most embarrassing moment in 2016 when I accidentally left this camera on during something very, very embarrassing and stupid, right? But it was an accident. You literally intentionally turn your camera on every day and you're high and you're vaping and you're spouting off nonsense and you're uh, so, uh, 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 and then you got your shirt off and you're sucking on cucumbers, and you're kissing cocks. Dude, I had one embarrassing moment in 2016 I'll never live down. Literally, every time you turn on your camera, it's the most embarrassing moment you've ever had in your life, and it continues every single time you turn on the camera. You can't even, you're a million subscriber YouTuber, and you can't even beat me in viewership and support anymore. What the fuck happened? You are nothing. You are a fucking ant on the ground that I accidentally step on. Do you get it? You're no one. You're a nobody. And you're never going to be big again because you fucked your life up so fucking bad. You're a screw up. And this, which you could have had back if you just wanted to act like a mature adult, a, a fucking person with a, with a soul, with a conscience, with some morals in your head, and you came on the show, and we did what I wanted to do, and you could have got your chip back, and we could have moved on. But even you're not smart enough for that. You just can't fucking be a man. You know, your meme is that Phil is a man. Yes, I am. You're not. You may have a family, but you ain't a fucking man. You're a bitch. A lifelong bitch. And no one's gonna fix that for you. You gotta fix that yourself but I'm fucking done with you.
I'm never going to speak about your dumb fucking ass again because you are nothing to me. You are like a fart in the fucking wind that you smell for a second, then it's gone, and you don't ever have to deal with it ever again. You're done. Don't fucking bring me up, you bitch-made loser, because your content fucking sucks. It's not content. It's for dumb, mouth-jeweling, stunted individuals who don't even get that your narratives aren't your own, that you're just regurgitating my detractors. Fuck off and go away. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I got it off my chest. I got it off my chest. I don't have to talk about it ever. I'm so happy. Because that was such a lingering piece of shit that was stuck. It was like a dingleberry that stuck to your ass. And you can't get it off for some reason. It's like a weird spot. What the fuck is this dingleberry? I can't get it. How could it be stuck? Right? Now I'm done with it. So now we can move on. All right? Thank you, Andy, for a gifted membership there. I appreciate that. Um, so I did have other stories for today, but it's obvious we're not going to get to them. So what we'll do is I'll save those stories for tomorrow. We have a couple of interesting news stories about 343 Industries renaming themselves to be all Halo. And then also uh, a, a, a really positive story about Alien Isolation is actually coming back. And we'll talk about that, but we'll do those tomorrow. All right. All right. We got just a couple quick minutes because I do need to get started with the React Show. But just a couple quick minutes, if anyone has anything they want to say, because when we start the React show, I'm not talking about Review Tech again. So if anyone has something to talk about, let me know. Uh, just tag me in the chat. Or if there was a contribution that comes in, I'll shout it out. But we are going to move on now to the React content for the rest of the day. Okay? And it is hot in here because it is like 75 plus degrees outside. And the sun is full out. So actually, when I start my React, I'm going to open the, the curtains to get some air in here. I'm like, it is hot, man. I'm sweating. Okay, so nothing, no one's tagging me, no one says anything, I guess you guys are good, you enjoy that? I had, to, I had to get it over with, it's just so dumb, man, you know, it really is, it's just so stupid, but why do I even have to talk about this fucking guy ever in my life, why does he have to bring me up, he's such a loser, I'm just, I can't take it anymore, right, like, I just, he has no chance, I'm never, I'm never gonna fucking give that man a chance again, there's no point, there's literally no point, he can't improve. He can't. He, he's beyond help, right? <clears throat> when will there be hat merchandise? I have brought this up, okay, with my, the merchandise company, and they're aware that you guys would be interested in hats. Um, so no worries there. And uh, basically, I'm, I'm I'm waiting. I forgot to give you an update on this. I'm supposed to receive. Um, the two level one podcast mugs today from the USPS, which sucks because they take so long. They've had it for like a week. They didn't deliver it yet. So I'm supposed to get it today. And then so tomorrow I can actually show you what the mugs look like in person, <clears throat> right? And uh, I basically want you guys to let me know as well what you think. If any of you are starting to get confirmation that the products you've ordered have been processed or in a shipment, I want to know. I want feedback on this merch, okay? Because this is brand new. I haven't worked with a merch company in many years. I want to be sure that everyone is happy, um, you know, with the quality, with everything. I know that last week people were saying they hadn't heard that anything had shipped yet. Um, my mugs had only shipped because they were made before things were even available for sale. And they did like a rush processing to get them to me right away so I could show you the product. And I haven't even gotten them yet. <laughs> right? So, <clears throat> yeah, more merch information will be coming. Tomorrow I should have the mugs and then we'll go from there. All right? No, Double M, because I, I don't really talk about it. If you haven't noticed, I haven't mentioned the merch in a few days. So I haven't talked about it. I don't even know if anyone got shipment confirmation. I would assume no one got their products yet. If I didn't get the product yet, and I was the one who was supposed to get them first, probably no one uh, got the products yet, right? So it's, you know, there's nothing to really talk about there. But I want to see. I want to see when people get the products, what they think of them and everything. I want feedback. So no, we're not doing Silent Hill 2 today. That's all day tomorrow with Silent Hill 2, okay? All right, I guess uh, we're good. Thank you, guys. Overwhelming support on the show today, seriously. I really appreciate you all coming out and hanging out. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the support. We almost crushed the goal. We're almost there, and we have a whole afternoon to hit it. Thank you all. Let's uh, head over.
Let's head on over to DSP Reacts for a Fun Clips React Show this afternoon, shall we? All right, awesome. This is going to be great. Thank you, guys. If you're watching On Demand, I hope you enjoyed the show. Tomorrow, we're going to cover some news topics. I should have the mugs. We should have a lot of stuff to talk about tomorrow. But if you're here live, please head over to DSP Reacts for DSP versus the Internet. Thank you, guys. Peace out. See you tomorrow.